see that little button that's going to pop up there and kind of get in your way. You can click on that and that lets you know that we're going to be live streaming all of our friends on YouTube. Welcome. This is a Friday workout, everybody. So if this is your third workout with us this week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, this is going to give us three hours of fitness this week. And now that's a good start. But if you can, if you're able to, if it doesn't look too cold like it does in the background here, you got to try to do something extra. I want you to try to do one extra thing, maybe today on Friday, Saturday, or on Sunday. Try to figure something active, something that's going to maybe challenge your mind and your body. Maybe some exercises that we did this week. You could try them again. Um, but let's go ahead and try for one extra active activity at a minimum. And if you wanted to make that activity surfing, remember, you could come surfing with me and my friends on Sunday. We're going to be surfing up in Oceanside and just loving the water and getting ready for the next storm. But it won't be raining yet. Let's have a sip of water, everybody. And if you're on YouTube, you're going to see I called this workout. And I don't know if he's here, but this is what we're doing. We were calling this Byron's Breakdown, Byron's Flow Breakdown. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take some of the exercises that Byron does when he's doing his flow, and we're going to do them individually. So what I have for that is an exercise pillow, and I'm going to be using that as a, instead of a sandbag. You know, when Byron's doing his workout, he's using that four-pound sandbag. But if you don't have a sandbag, that's okay. You could use an exercise pillow. So we're going to do the moves that Byron does. We're going to practice them uh, for the baton. I don't have a baton handy, but I did. I have a golf club. I have a golf club. And so I'm going to use the golf club. And what's neat about the golf club is it has kind of a different weight to it. It's a little heavier at one end than it is down here by the handle. And so that'll make for a good experience with some of these exercises. I uh, almost knocked my water over right there. And so... Let's go ahead and get ready. Let's do the breathing motto. We had on Wednesday, Lorraine did a terrific job doing the breathing motto. We had Carla and Coach Emily were doing it on Monday. Um, I got a chance to do the breathing motto. We've had some breathing mottos going, but how about Nick? How about Nick? Nick, how about you, but all by yourself? Oh, Karen, how about this? Karen goes now, and then Nick, you'll do it at the end. Does that sound good, Nick? All right, but Karen, you got to do it all by yourself too. So it's going to be all you. I know you got this. And everybody, before Karen starts, I got to share it. It, is, it was a great <laughs> idea. Okay, everybody, I'm going to share this idea. This is a special. So if you're watching right now, you're going to know about something other people aren't going to know about in the, until it's ready. But when, <laughs> before we did the workout, I was showing everybody how I had an <laughs> exercise pillow. And this exercise pillow is the love pillow. It says love in different languages. So love, amor, um, rock, rock, raku, rock, rock house. That's rock house. Las, laska. That's, that means love in a, some language. Um, some of these I have to practice, but Karen said, you know what? Why don't we do a breathing <laughs> motto pillow with sign language on the back? <laughs> Best idea of the week, everybody. So I'm going to look into it today. I'm going to talk to my brother and I'm going to tell him that we need to find a pillow company and we need to talk to them. And I think that is a wonderful idea. And Karen, you're going to get the first one. You're going to get the first one. I'm going to promise you, whichever one is the first one, I'm going to save that one. I mean, I'm, I'm going to make that's going to be Karen's. But right now, let's do the breathing motto. It's going to be going on a pillow soon now, everybody. <laughs> Karen, go ahead. Go ahead and take it away. What a great idea. Breathe in good. Breathe out bad. Breathe in happy. Breathe out bad. Breathe in the bad. How the worst brings in your power so you can really go, go first. Karen, that's incredible. 
And can you, uh, can you, I can picture it on a pillow and you know what we might want to do, Karen, and I'm going to, I'm going to check with you on it is we might want to choose like a special kind of font, like style of the letter. And when we're ready for that, <laughs> Karen, I'm going to share, I'm going to say, you know, here's some of the, the fonts that we're looking at and I'm going to let you decide on the font. So Karen, you're gonna get you're gonna get to decide on how it's gonna look on the pillow. We're gonna get it all ready for the design, and then I'll send you and your mom an email, and you can let me know which one is your favorite font. Or we could even do it on one of our workouts, um, and then we'll we'll pick the one that you like, and we'll. Well, I think we can do like in bubble, like a bubble, bubble letter style. Everything. Yeah. That could look good. We'll come up with a couple um, that'll it'll kind of like a like a simulated image, and then you can look at those, and we'll do one of them for sure. With maybe one with the bubble letters, maybe one we'll do like in a fancy letters, maybe one we'll do maybe one we'll do simple letters, and just to see, just to have some differences, and then um, and then there might be one that you're like, you know what, I I want to see it this way. Or maybe in different colors. Maybe you want, I don't, know, I don't know, but maybe maybe that's what you're thinking. And we're going to let you, Karen, we're going to let you be a, a product kind of a pillow designer with us because it was it's your idea. Everybody, <laughs> let's give Karen a round of applause. Doing the breathing motto, getting us kicked off with the breathing motto and with a fantastic idea. Breathing mottos going on a pillow. All right, everybody, let's get our head and neck moving around. I got a cold looking background here behind me. There's a deer right here. We got a, a tree and over here, a little house looks like somebody's inside and they got a fire going. Let's go ahead and move our head and neck around the picture. Um, but let's do something maybe a little different. Let's do some diagonals where we come back to the middle each time. So what do I mean by that? So let's go ahead and maybe look down here kind of towards the deer. So going diagonal this way back to the middle. Let's go down and look maybe at the house, back to the middle. Let's go ahead and look up above the tree, back to the middle. And then let's go ahead and look up above the house, back to the middle. So let's try that. It's four directions, but let's try those four directions and we'll do it, uh, we'll do it four times. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go deer, middle, house, middle, above the tree, middle above the house to the middle let's do it again deer middle house the middle tree the middle and clouds to the middle here we go two more deer middle house middle tree middle and clouds one more time here we go deer middle house middle tree middle and in the clouds holding a nice job let's go ahead and do uh i don't want to do our, our typical ones i want to try to do some some a little different and um so let's go ahead and let's do a hmm i'll tell you what i wanted to think about let's go ahead and do the shape of a house so what is that going to have us do so let's, let's just think about it. Let's play it out as we go. So let's bring our head over to one side. So turn your head, get it on one side. We're going to make the wall of the house. So let's go up and down to build the wall. So we got one wall over here. All right, now we got to build the floor of the house. So let's go down across the bottom a couple times, building the floor. Okay, now we got to build the other wall. So we're going to go up and down a couple times, building the wall of the house. All right, now we have to put the roof on it. And so the roof's gonna go up and then down. Up, so a little bit of a, again, diagonal line, up and then down, up and then down. And then the last thing we need to do is put in some nails. You wouldn't put a house together with nails, but our house is. So let's do giraffe neck for our nails. So we're gonna giraffe neck, giraffe neck, giraffe neck, giraffe neck. Giraffe neck, giraffe neck, 
giraffe neck, and then giraffe neck. So we're kind of putting our nails all around. Let's try that one more time. That was actually, we just did that for the first time ever. Let's try it again. I'm going to go on this side now. So I'm over here and let's go up and down. Let's build some walls up and down, up and down, and then down. Let's build the floor going across the bottom, across the bottom. One more. Here we go. And then let's build that other wall going up over here, building that wall up this way. All right. Let's go with our roof diagonals to the up in the middle. So up in middle, down to the shoulder, up in middle, down to the shoulder. Now let's put in our nails. Here we go, giraffe necking all the way around. And you can see I'm trying not to move my body. Just giraffe neck. Going down, down, and back to the middle. Neat. That's kind of neat, everybody. Again, we're just trying to get our neck warmed up. We're just trying to get these muscles and our mind connected and ready for our workout. Let's do one more. Let's go ahead and do the ear lift. That's kind of a classic one that we do, but let's go ahead and bring that ear up. Let's bring that shoulder down. Maybe shake out that arm a little bit and then reach down with it. There we go, reaching down. We're gonna feel, you can see the stretch right there. Wow, right there, getting a good stretch in my neck. Bring it back into the middle. Let's start getting the arm moving around first, kind of shaking that arm. And then we're gonna bring that ear up and then we're gonna get our, our neck stretch. And you can see I was doing a little bit too much of a head tilt. I want to go up and then down right here. So there we go. I got it again. There's that muscle right here. And moving that arm maybe a little bit, shaking it around, and then reaching down like I'm trying to get something out of the snow. Back into the middle. Let's shake both arms out, moving both around. We'll do one more ear lift on each side. So let's go up with that first ear again. Getting our neck stretch, getting our shoulder dropping down, getting that ear raising up. Three, two, one. Let's move them around again, move them around. Shake out that other arm a little bit. Bring that ear up. Ooh, I did this one really good on the first try. And now here we go. Reaching down, reaching down. Going five, four, three, two, one. Nice job. Woo. Getting that neck going. Let's move those shoulders around. Do a couple shoulder circles. So shoulder circles. Take us up, back, forward, up, back, down, and forward. We're moving all the way around right there with the shoulder circle. Let's just do one side. Just one side. See if you can do a better job. Try to make that improvement when you go to just one. One side, make it a little bit of an improvement there. There we go. Nice moving it around. Let's go to the other side, moving it around. There we go. Nice job. Moving it up, down, all around. Good job. All right, let's go to the elbows, making elbow circles, moving them forward, moving them around this way, round and around, going forward with the elbows, the shoulder is gonna get a workout, but the elbows are gonna get a workout from this by stabilizing that arm. Keep it going, let's go backwards now. Backwards, moving them backwards, getting the rhomboids moving, getting the shoulder blades moving and grooving. There we go, nice job. Moving them around, let's go up and down with the chicken wing. Chicken wing going up and down, bringing those elbows up and down, that's it. There you go, nice job, you got it. It's just, it, this one can be tough because, again, you're moving your arms, but you're really using your shoulders. The shoulders are lifting up and bringing everything up. Let's go ahead and hold it up for five, four, three, two, one. Let's start with some down arm circles. So arm circle now, the whole arm, but we're letting it, we're kind of down by our legs. So a circle down by the legs, moving those arms around down by the legs. You can go one direction. And then you can go back the other direction, going backwards. And so again, you can see I'm going forwards this way, backwards this way. And look at the middle of my back when I do this. You can see how that shirt's kind of moving around. Well, if the shirt's moving around, you can bet the muscles are moving around. So doing those arms, let's go ahead and bring our arms up and down. So this is kind of like a pelican. Ooh, you're starting to feel this, I bet, in your deltoids, maybe your trapezius. Let's keep it going for just a few more. And then we're gonna do one time, we're gonna do a hold. All right, we're gonna go three, two, and then let's hold them up and bring them in and bring it out. And bring it in and bring it out. Here we go, ooh, I hit the green screen, here we go. Let's go for five and four and three and two and one. Wow, we 
Are you feeling that in your deltoids? You should be, because remember that deltoid is attaching our arm. It's helping to keep our arm attached to our body. And every time we move that arm around, that deltoid, he's going to be a part of it. And we want the shoulder blades. We want the back. We want these areas of our back to move around. And so that's why with a lot of our exercises, you hear me talk about the rhomboids, the trapezius, and moving around the shoulder blades, or even sometimes I'll call it the scapula. It sounds like spatula, but it's not. It's the scapula. And the scapula, believe it or not, it's just like our, it's our wings in the middle of our back. If we had wings, they would be attached to our scapula and they would, they would reach out. And if you think about it, our arms can kind of be like wings. If you could imagine having feathers, or maybe if you've ever seen somebody doing the parachuting where they have the parachute suit, they're using their arms as wings. And so in that same instance, the shoulder blade is going to be a major player in how that wing is going to affect with the air and them flying around. Let's have a sip of water. Let's keep our workout going. I had a great idea and then I just lost it. Oh, it, it, it's gone. Uh, has that, that ever happened to anybody? It was right in the middle of when we were doing our arm lifts. I had an idea. I was like, that's what we should do. And then I started thinking about have flying around with wings on. And oh, well, we'll get to another one. Let's keep going with our arms a little bit. Let's get our hands going. Let's get our fingers moving. And we're going to work on the fingers and our wrists. That's happened to me. It's happened to me before, too. You're thinking about something. And then no matter how hard you try to remember it, you can't remember it. Now watch what'll happen. I'll stop thinking about it and it'll come back. It's, it's like a memory, like floating around in my mind. All right. So wiggling the fingers, wiggling the fingers. Let's go with pressure next. So we're going to apply pressure on the same hand. Let's squeeze, squeeze. I'm squeezing my thumb and my index finger. Squeeze. Now I'm squeezing my thumb and my middle finger and feel how your other fingers, they want to help, right? Shake, shake it off again. Let's try this out again. Shake it off. All right, shake them off. Let's try it out again. Here we go. Squeeze. Now feel this. If in the other, you can feel the other three fingers. If you have all five fingers, you're going to feel when you're squeezing the index in your thumb, the other finger, they're kind of curling a little bit. They want to get involved. Now go to the middle finger and squeeze and feel how the other fingers there, they want to squeeze too. They kind of want to make a fist. Don't let them. All right, now let's go with the ring finger and again, squeeze. But now, ooh, do you feel how with the ring finger, the other fingers aren't, is anybody else feeling the difference? Let's go with the pinky. Ooh, squeeze, squeeze the pinky. Oh, and look, that I can I can move these two fingers around like it doesn't matter. Go back to that, that middle finger and squeeze. Now try to lift your other, oh, it's tough. It's tough to do, shake it out. What's neat, everybody, is how our hands, again, across the top of my hand here, and you can see where my ligaments are gonna run, my tendons through my hand, they're so close together that sometimes, and they're even sharing kind of muscle connections in the lower arm, that sometimes when I'm doing something with one finger, there might be other ones that wanna get involved. And so it's gonna take, again, concentration, uh, take some training, uh, and it's gonna take us again, right? The ring finger, super strong ring finger squeeze. Karen's saying that. A ring finger squeeze, super strong. Uh, index finger is pretty strong, but the middle finger squeeze is not as strong. And the, my pinky's kind of getting stronger because we've been doing this. Let's go ahead and go into our wrist. So let's think about our wrist movements. So this would be up and down. This is the same as going like this, in and out. And Karen, it probably has to do with, again, the proximity of the tendons and the way that the muscles kind of interact when they go through the wrist. So certain certain fingers, they kind of have those muscles that are gonna, let's go side to side now. They're gonna be so close. And you can see it on the back of your hand, how some of these, they kind of just come straight, straight towards each other. All right, we're going side to side. So we went up and down, side to side. Nice, and then let's go with rotation. There we go. So you got your tendons and your ligaments. The ligaments attach the bone to another bone. 
and the tendons attach the bone to a muscle. So you got to think, you got, and you have both. We all have ligaments and we all have tendons. And who the, the most famous tendon is probably the Achilles tendon. Has anybody ever heard of the Achilles tendon and know, know where it is? The Achilles tendon? The Achilles tendon comes down from the back of our leg through our calf and it goes around our heel and attaches to our calcaneus. So uh, around the bottom kind of of the foot there. And um, it's a very important one. It's very important. What about a ligament? Has anybody heard of a ligament? Does anybody know where a famous ligaments are? If, if Ben was here, he would know because a lot of athletes, a lot of athletes will, has, who's ever heard of somebody hurting their ACL or their MCL? Well, the L stands for ligament. And so you have your anterior cruciate ligament and your medial cruciate ligament. And those are going to help with keeping our knee in place and are keeping our knee strong. And so um, ooh, I like spring training. I like, what are we talking about? Oh, we are. We're in spring training with the baseball players. That's right. We'll do some baseball here in a minute. Uh, we got our wrists moving. We got our arms moving. Let's do a little bit of our biceps and triceps. So let's go ahead and just get those biceps moving. And let's do about 20, just, just regular bicep curls. Nothing too difficult with these, just regular old bicep curls. We're going to get into Byron's flow breakdown. And then I think what we should do is we should have Byron also do some flow. So Byron, before you hopped on, I told everybody, I had an idea that we're going to do uh, Byron's flow breakdown. And so we're going to do the moves um, for repetition. And so some people will be able to practice some of your moves. And then maybe after that, we'll have you do a flow and people will be able to follow along. So I'm going to do some of the moves with an exercise pillow and a golf club. That's what I'll be using. Let's keep those biceps going. Let's go up and down five more times. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Now for the triceps, we're going to, we're going to kind of take our hand and it's almost like you're trying to bump something behind you. So we're going to go back behind our body. And so we'll go one, two, three, four. Uh, when we do, when we do the full combo, we'll have the guys do it. When we do the breakdown, uh, I'll do that. one, And then we'll switch it up so everybody can practice. So keep it going. And then you can see I'm kind of leaning forward. I got those triceps extending my arm backward and the biceps bringing it in and the triceps bringing it away. Here we go. Five more, five, four, three, two, and one. And now you might feel a little bit of that in the back of your arm. Now that's with no weight. This is, this is a warm up. Uh, let's go to our core. Now let's get our core moving and let's start with the first one involving our lower body. So with this one, let's do the elbow knee tap. And with the elbow knee tap, that's going to be different than the hand knee tap, elbow tap. This is an elbow and knee tap. So if you're standing up, you're going to bring your leg up and you're going to bump your knee with your elbow just like that. If you're sitting down, I want you to lean forward with like a little twist and you're going to go and you're going to get that, get that knee. So if you're standing up, you're going to be bringing your knee up. If you're sitting down, you're going to be bringing your elbow down and then bringing yourself back up. And we're going to do 20, everybody, 20. This is a stabilizing exercise. It's a core exercise. It's a great exercise. And it starts in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Tap. See you, Carla. Tap. Tap. Three. Tap. Four. Tap. Five. Tap. Six. Tap. Seven. Tap. There you go, Nick. Eight. Tap. Nine. Tap. Ten. Tap. Eleven. Tap. Twelve. Tap. Thirteen. Tap. Fourteen. Good job. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. And twenty. Woo. Again, that exercise, that was getting our legs involved. Having to work on some balance. Also, you might feel that you got your heart rate going a little bit more because, again, 
you're using a lot of muscles and all those muscles, they need something. They need something to be able to fuel themselves. They need oxygen. They're going to make your heart beat faster. So the blood pumps through that body, gets the carbon dioxide out, and then gets more oxygen in to those muscles while they're in action. All right, the next one let's go ahead and do, let's stay with the core and let's do the side to side bend. So the side to side bend, if we're sitting up, uh, if we're sitting and we're sitting up, we're gonna be leaning down to one side as if we're trying to maybe put our elbow kind of in our pocket. If you're standing up, you might be able to put your arms down and you're gonna be like you're reaching down towards the ground, but look, it's sideways. So if I'm here, this is sideways, I'm going this way and this way. I'm, what I'm not doing is going forward and down. So it's gonna be side to side. And let's go ahead and let's do 10. We'll go five each way. So we're gonna go one, two, and then back to the middle. Three, four, five. Great job, everybody. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nice job, great job, Tyler in the house. Let's go with our next one. We're gonna do a body circle. So we had our body getting small and long. We had our body going side to side. And now let's move our body around from the hips. We're gonna move around. We're gonna get down low. And then we're gonna come back up and we're gonna lean back like we're in the matrix. Like we're trying to like, something's going by us and we're trying to watch out for it. Getting down low. Bringing ourselves around, bringing ourselves around, leaning back. Has anybody ever played um? What's that? What's that game where you hit the ball around the the pole? Tether ball, tether ball. It's like we're going around the pole like a tether ball, or maybe like you're trying to avoid the tether ball getting you. Bringing yourself back, and you can see I'm leaning backwards, but my core is going to fire up because I'm leaning backwards. Now as I come in. These muscles are going to fire up to keep me from falling down. And then as I come around, these muscles are going to fire up to keep me from going too far to one side or the other. So let's go for four more of these. So I'm going down. Four. Imagine like we're trying to go underneath a bar. Three. Down under the bar. Two. And then one more. Y'all look and you go. Oh, I almost got out of the screen. And one. Nice job, everybody. Great job. So again, we're getting our core moving, our shoulders moving, our biceps, our triceps, our lower arm, our forearm, our wrist, our hands, our neck, our mind, our smiles. Have we been smiling? Let's do a smile in three, two, one. And frown. And the home alone face. And relax. That's fun. I saw a lot of you doing the home alone face. I was doing it too. It's fun. It's fun. And we're working on the muscles. Remember, we have a lot of muscles up here, 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 all throughout our face is muscles. And those muscles help us to make our facial expressions. They help us with our food and with our water. What do you got, Nick, with the eyes? Doing the eyebrow lift? How is that happening? Is it is there a string attached? No. Is it gravity? No. It's muscles. That's right, Nick. There's muscles in our forehead. And when you bring your eyebrows up like surprise, you're going to be firing up those muscles. Good job, everybody. Let's have a sip of water and then we're gonna get into Byron's flow breakdown. I'm gonna start off with the, the pillow. So Byron, hang on real quick. We're gonna have you do your flow after we do the move. So do the, do the moves with us and then we're gonna bring up Byron and he's gonna put them together. Plus maybe even some that we've never seen before. All right, so go ahead. If you have a sandbag or a pillow, or maybe even like a stuffed animal, 
you can get it. I'm going to be using this pillow right here. And one of the first exercises Byron does is throws the object from one hand to the other. Now, you could do this where you're doing a handoff, where we're going to be moving this back and forth across our body. And you could even do it with like a reach. We've seen Byron doing this one. So one of the things with this exercise, as you get good with it, is you're going to find yourself letting go and letting letting it fly a little bit of a throw so let's start off with this one let's do about 20 or so of these and we're going to go side to side and then as we get better with it we're going to start to go further and further away from our body to where we're all the way out and then we'll bring it back in so here we go so let's go in the front of our body pass it off there you go evan nice job man passing off this is the close Pass. We'll call this the close pass because it's close to our body and our hands are close together. And now start reaching out a little further when you get it. Kind of reach away and then reach away. And we're like almost like the, the pillow. You're trying to hand it off to somebody else. And so we're moving it side to side. And I'm still doing a close pass. Look at that. Still doing the close pass. Let's go five more of these. And then we're going to do five with a little bit of a throw. Nice job, everybody. Keep it going. Do your very best with this one. And now I'm going to throw it and I'm going to go side to side with a little throw. And so you can see I'm throwing it across the body. My hands aren't coming right next to each other. They're a little far away. And I'm just, oh, and I dropped it. That's what we want to have happen. Good job for me. Because if I wasn't trying to push myself, there's no way I would drop it. But if I am trying to push myself, there's a chance that you might drop it, and that's okay. That's why we do this with a pillow or a sandbag. Stuffed animals are great for this one too. So remember, that's going to be the close pass, also with the reach, reaching out. Close patch, close pass, reach, press. I like it. Now, another one Byron does that's also a, a reach and a, a kind of a press move is just going forwards and backwards. Who remembers seeing him do this one? So let's go ahead, let's go for 10, where we're just gonna hold with two hands. If we can, we're gonna hold with two hands and try to reach it out as far away as we can. Nice job, there you go. And then just, just push it away. And as soon as, you'll get it far away and then you'll bring it back. Let your muscles tell you when to bring it back. You push them away and let your muscles tell you when to pull it back in. If you can get all the way out, go for all the way out. If you can get about halfway out, try to get those muscles to reach out as far as they can. There you go. Nice job. That's it. Nice job, man. There you go. Keeping it going, bringing it in and out. And then let's hold it out. Let's just reach out. We're going to hold it out. Let's hold it out for five, four, three, two, and one. So both of those had kind of a pressing move to them. And we're also, we did some holds with it as well. Now, another one that Byron does very often is the twist hold. So with the twist hold, we're going to take our, our pillow or back and we're going to twist over to one side. So I'm twisting all the way over here. And then I'm going to twist over to this side over here. Try to imagine, I just did. Try to imagine you're trying to take it and put it in your back pocket. You're trying to put the pillow into your back pocket and then go over to the other side we're trying to put it in that back pocket so i'm going across and then i'm going across and i'm going to try to put it in my back pocket going across and by putting it in my back pocket it's going to really get you to twist around there you go nice job twist and then twist let's go four more twist four twist three twist two twist and one nice job so that's going to get our core working out and like when byron's doing it with that sandbag there's some weight to it so it's going to add some resistance to his core that's a good move all right the next one we're going to do this is one of nick's favorites we're going to do the head balancing and the shoulder balancing so with the head and shoulder balance you got to try to get your core strong, get your core, even though this is with our head, our head sitting on top of our core. So 
if we get this, give them a little abdominal squeeze. We didn't do that in the warm up, so let's do it now. Let's give a little squeeze. Three, two, one, squeeze. Now lock it in. Hold that squeeze. Bring your pillow or sandbag up on top of your head. Keep that squeeze going. Find the balance so that it doesn't fall. Now, if I put it over here on the side, it's going to fall. And if I put it here too much in the front, it's going to fall. So you might have to move it around a little bit like this. You see how I'm, I'm keeping my hands close and I'm trying to find, oh, see, that's not the spot. And so you got to find a good spot that gets balanced. And then when you do find it, then you can let go. Squeeze your core. Let's try to hold the balance here. Let's go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And now I'm trying to do the squat. Byron likes to do the squat. Now, when you're done with the head balance, you could just reach up and grab it, or you could let it fall. I like letting it fall because when you let it fall, there's going to be a moment as it's falling, that your brain is going to fire up. Your brain is going to feel it fall. And your brain's going to say, urgent, I need to catch that. I need to try to keep that from falling on the ground. In just that little bit right there, uh, it can really get, again, your mind and your body super connected. Now, with the pillow on my shoulder, I might have to lean it against my head here a little bit. But again, the same thing. I got to find a good spot for it. And now I have it here. And so I don't want to have it fall. If I move around too much, whoop, there, whoop, there it goes. It starts to fall down. But if I stay balanced, and one thing I like about maybe doing this one, there we go. I got it. I got it locked in. Is maybe I could do, again, like squats, like what Byron was doing, where I'm going to lower down and I'm going to lower up. I could do like a march in place where I'm bringing my legs up. And now I'm holding my balance here. So my core is active. I'm firing up muscles right here to keep this from moving around. Oh, no, oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, it's that, it didn't. I used my muscles to stop it from falling. I didn't have to touch it. I was able to use my muscles. Let's go three more march in place. Two and one. Nice. And then you can drop it down again. I like doing the drops. I like putting something up like this. We call this one the pirate's parrot. Who's ever seen the, somebody with a bird on their shoulder? Has anybody ever seen that before? A, a person with a bird on their shoulder? Oh, this one's tough. Oh, and there's, there's a good example of something that I should have talked about. So look, when I try to balance it with this hand, I'm using this trapezius and deltoid, right? So when I try to move my arm, the trapezius and deltoid move. So what could I do? And I, I kind of realized this. If I just leave my arm down, I use my other arm to put that pillow up there. Now there's no movement in this trapezius. It was on this side. And now I have a chance. Look at that. I'm balancing with my ear in my shoulder. And let's see if I can do a knee lift again. One. Oh, two. Oh, it's getting tough. Three, four, five, six. Look at this. It's on my cheek. Seven, eight, nine. 10 and then drop it. Now that might look like if somebody didn't know what was going on, they might say, Coach John, that looks like maybe kind of a silly exercise. It looks like you're trying to take a nap while you're doing a workout. That doesn't make sense, but it's not. It's about my core being connected with my upper body so that when something up here is weighing me down or I have to focus on, my core is able to focus with me. All right, the next one, this is one of my favorites. Byron does this move quite a bit it's the behind the back pass so with the behind the back pass you guessed it we're going behind our back and we're going to hand it off so this one won't be a throw you might be able to throw but this will be more of a handoff behind the back what i want you to try to not do is to lean forward to get it around only if you need to if you feel like i'm having a tough time then try leaning forward a little bit and see if you can do it, move it around. But let's go ahead and do a pass behind our back. And this is a big one for the shoulders. All right, look at my shoulder. Look at the position they're in. Coming in front, going behind, coming in front. Nice job, everybody. And so this is going to work out our shoulders. It's going to make them healthy in all the directions they can move. 
and we're also doing a hand exchange. So we're going right side to left side. And that's going to, again, get our mind firing up between the right side and the left side. We can switch directions. And again, just passing that pillow around, moving it around, keeping my core. Now, if I'm not swinging around like this, that's because I'm tightening up these muscles just a little bit, just a little bit of squeeze. And then with this one, again, you can go, you can go down kind of low. My arms are straight or you can kind of have it to where you're going with your arms bent. You might also be able to go where you can pass it behind your head. So let's try out a couple of those going up. After this, we're gonna do a water break. So let's go for five and five. Here we go, going five times around one way. And this is also, look at these shoulders. They're getting up, they're moving, they're in position. Three, two, and switch in directions. And we'll go five going this way, five. Four, same thing with the head, but you want to keep it straight. You don't want to lean it forward. You want to keep it up and make your arms get behind it. If you can, try to get those arms up and get them to go behind your head. Two, I'm not good at counting. And one. All right, water break. We're almost ready for Byron. All right, the next two that we're going to do with this pillow and then we'll grab our resistance bar and do a couple. But we're gonna do hot potato off the ground. So the hot potato off the ground, we're taking our pillow, we're going down to the ground and we're, we're lifting it back up, but we're gonna do it quickly. So you're gonna go down and you're gonna pop it up like you're trying to pull it up. It's gonna fly for a second. It's gonna be a little bit of a squat. Let's try for 10 hot potatoes. So we go down, up, and then we catch it in the air, down, up, catch it. And you got to imagine like it's hot. You don't want to burn your hand. Here we go for 10 and three, two, one. We go down, one, down, two, down, three, down, four, down, five, down, six. There you go. Down, seven, hot potato, down, eight, down, nine, down, and 10. I got it. So the hot potato, it's a great one. It's going to make us work on our, our grip, catching something out of the air. And if you drop it, that's okay. It's just a pillow. It's no big deal. Now, the last one with the pillow we're going to do is going to be the figure eight. So you've seen Byron doing this one a lot. This is where we're going to go between our legs. If we're sitting down and there is no way we're going to be able to get this moving around through our legs, I like to do the over the arm drop. And then you can grab it this way, or you can bring it back around. And so I'm going up and I'm, I'm making a figure eight shape, but I'm focusing on getting it up and over my arm and down. If I'm standing up, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna pass it between my legs and then I'm gonna have it in this hand. So I have it in my left hand, down, up. Now it's in my right hand. But to get there, I'm not just reaching down and up. I'm going down, going between my legs and I'm grabbing it. So here we go, three, two, going for 10, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, doing a little squat, eight, nine, and 10. Nice job, everybody. Go ahead, let's have a sip of water. Let's put the pillows down. If you have a resistance bar, grab your resistance bar. We're just going to do a couple with the resistance bar. The first one we're going to start with is the baton spin. So the baton spin, we can do this two hands. You don't have to hold it in the middle, but it's a good idea. You want to hold it as close to the middle as you can. Now with the baton spin, you have to twist the bar. You got to twist it around. And once you get around to a certain spot, you're going to let go with one hand and then you're going to grab it and you're going to keep it going. So you can see I'm doing a twist and then I let go in the twist. Look at where it's happening in the elbow and in the shoulder, in the wrist. So we twist and then let go, twist and then let go, twist. So for a moment, you have two hands on the baton. But then for a moment, you're just going to have one hand. 
And so we're spinning it around. If I switch directions, I can get it here and look, I can lift it this way, bring it around, grab it here, bringing it around. Let's go for 10. They don't have to be too fast. 10, nine, eight. Nick, you're gonna be coming up with Byron. Seven, six, if I wanna change directions, I can go this way. Five, so again, holding with two hands. Grabbed it with this hand. I'm going to let go with this hand. Grab it back with that hand. Four. Three. And you can go a little fast if you start to feel it. Two. And one. Nice job. Now, another one I like what Byron does is we call it the lumberjack. So with the lumberjack, you're going to be having two hands. So this is good for the golf club. Two hands on the stick this way. And then we have to lift it up and get it over our shoulder, over to the other shoulder, over our head. So let's go ahead and do 10 of these to where we're going to have the stick. I'm holding it here. If I hold it here, it'll be easier. If I hold it farther away, we already know. That'll make it harder. I'm going to hold it as far away as I can. And let's go up and over our head. One. Two. Nice job, everyone. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, nice job. Let's do one more with the baton, and then we'll have Byron and Nick. They're going to come up, and they're going to show you how you can put all these moves together into what we call a flow. Now, a flow, it's kind of just like water flowing. You kind of just go with it. You might be doing an exercise and then you feel like, you know, I want to jump into this one and you just go with that feeling, that flow. So everybody, let's get ready. The next one we're going to do is going to be the inchworm. Well, I can't show the inchworm. Maybe I can do an inchworm here. I can't. So here we go. I have my golf club on the desk. And now what I'm going to do is start at the top and we're going to work our way down, leaning on the golf club, but also pushing it down into the ground now as i come back up i'm going to be pushing down as i lift and come back up we can put it on the background too care down 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 all the way to the bottom and then up 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 all the way to the top let's go one more time all the way up and down and the whole time you're pushing it into the ground. I'm doing this on a desk, so I'm pushing it down into the desk. And what that's going to do is just like the pressure from our fingertips. If I, I got the golf clipper, if I push down, look, watch, watch you, you'll see some muscles. Like, if I push down, muscles are going to fire up in my core, in my shoulders, in my arms. Those muscles that are going to give me that pressure, they're going to be important muscles. I want to get them fired up. And the, the inchworm is a good way we can do that. So you remember, you got to be pushing down while you're moving up. And that's the challenge. It's good for the armpit, too. That's what we'll do. So everybody, we're making a plan here in the background. For the first time ever, my golf club just fell. Not the first time that's happened. But for the first time on our workouts, we're, gonna, we're changing up a little bit, Nick. But we're going to get you on tonight. We're going to have Sammy doing the breathing motto at the end. And yes, yeah, Sammy, you got it. And I'm going to put the words up on the background. In the future, thanks to Karen, we're going to put the breathing motto on a pillow. It's going to be awesome. Cannot wait. So everybody, have a sip of water. Next up, we are going to have Nick coming up. He's going to be working out with Byron. Byron's going to be the leader. And now he's going to do some moves that maybe I didn't cover. So do your best to follow along with Byron. Uh, or you can just watch them. You can watch the moves and then you can practice later on. You could do these moves yourself. And so Byron, you do whatever you want to do. You go with the flow. You know how to do that. And um, and we're going to get We got Nick coming up here. We got, there he is. Nice. Nick's in the house. Byron's getting there. He's, he's ready to go. Nick, go ahead and stand up. We're starting off with the resistance bar. So... Nick's hopping up. Byron's got the bar. I'll be doing the play-by-play, -play, so you'll be able to hear me talking about what is happening. And the first thing that we're doing is Byron's holding that bar with one hand, 
holding it out, doing an isometric hold. And here's the one arm power punch. There you go. Nice job. So he's bringing that arm in and look at that. That's the 10 pound. That's the power punch right there. Reaching out, punching, bit, punching out, pulling it back and holding it in the middle. So he's also balancing that bar from left to right. Everybody, this is a great exercise to practice because Byron is working on stability and strength in that shoulder, elbow, and wrist. By look how strong Byron's punch is, everybody. And he's going for some repetitions. He's punching out. He's only using the right arm. Now he's switching up to the left arm. Showing us, there he goes. He's got nothing up his sleeve. Nothing extra to help him hold on. Only his muscles are going to help him hold this bar up. He's going to bring it up there by his shoulder. You can see, and there's another punch coming out with it with now the left arm. There you go, Nick. Excellent job. And you can see on Nick's side there, he's doing the same move. He's pulling that elbow in against his body and then pressing it away. And Nick and Byron both are working with 10 pound resistance bars. It's incredible, everybody. If you try this, even with just your arm, just imagination. There you go. A couple of us are doing it with imagination. There you go. Keep it going, reaching out and punching in. This is like doing a, a power punch in boxing. Nice moves, Byron. He's got it going on. Excellent. Let's see what he's going to do next. So from the power punching, he's going now. He's got one hand in the middle, and it looks like he's going to use the other hand. He is, everybody. So this is going to be two hands, and he's doing a baton spin. And look at that. He's doing the baton spin. Nice job. Nice move, Byron. And look at that. You can see how he's got two hands, then one hand, then two hands, then one hand. You're going to get a pattern. There you go, Nick. Two and one and two and one. Nice move. There you go. Nice job, Nick. Get into that rhythm. Get into that pattern. Byron's spinning it around. A little tap on the ground. Nice move. There you go, Nick. Excellent job. Nice job. We got about six minutes to go, guys. Let's keep it going. Keep the party going here. That's what they say. Keep the party going. Good moves, Byron. Spinning it around, going for a couple more baton spins. Nice job, Sammy. Rolling it up, doing the salad spinner. Excellent. Moving your arms around each other. That's a good alternative. Oh, and here it is, the kayak row. It looks like Byron's holding it up, up there by his shoulders. You can do this one with your hands, or you can do this one with your elbows. There you go, but one goes forward, one goes back. One goes forward while the other one goes back. Nice job, Tyler. There you go, moving it around. Like we're kayaking in Lake Michigan, and we're trying to get all the way up there to Canada. We're kayaking all, oh, that's a long way to go. Keeping it moving. There you go. Nice job going around down the river, paddling in the water. Next time I go kayaking, I'm going to take a video kayaking. There you go, Nick. You're looking good. Keep it going. You're doing repetition. So it's going to, it's going to feel like the same move each time. Try to get it. Try to pull it back a little more. There you go. Focus on it. Nice job. There you go, Nick. There you go. Keep that focus. Think about that kayak paddle. Remember, everybody, if you ever want to go kayaking, we can go kayaking maybe this summer in Mission Bay. We can get some kayaks and do a, a kayak kayak trip. All right, Byron's getting down low. He's down low. He's got the knee press going. He's in the squat position, using the bar to stabilize his body. Getting ready. Might be having the switcheroo. Might be coming up here in a moment. We got about four minutes to go. Byron's doing a great job. These are the squats. So when you're doing the squats, you can see Byron's bending his hips. He's bending his knees. His ankles are actually bending too. His arms and back, he's bending everything. There you go. Keep it going. Nick's going back down. Nick's getting some reps in. Nice nice job, Nick. That was real good. Byron's going for maybe one more with the resistance bar. He's got it behind his back now. And so this could be the back stretch or it could be the back twist. Let's see which one he's going to do. There's only a couple moves like this. And let's see, he's going, he's moving his body around. Look at this move, everybody. Byron's doing kind of a diagonal lean 
with the back stretch. There you go, Nick. So what's neat about this, everybody, is Byron, he's shifting his weight to be more on one side than the other. So that left leg is really going to fire up. And now in this case, he's got the right leg. It's going to be super fired up there. You feel that, Nick, when you go to one side over the other, you there you go. You got to keep that shoulder over your toes, just like we talked about, Nick. Shoulder over the toes. There it is. Nick, wow, look at you, man. You're stable, man. You're like a you're like a monument. We can't knock you down. There you go. Now Byron's going a little side to side shift. So he's got the side to side. This would be a backstretch typewriter where he's moving sideways. There you go. Shifting that weight. Good job. Nick's got it going on too. And we got about, about three minutes to go, Byron, if you want to do the sandbag or you could do all the bar. Yeah, he's going to go for the sandbag. That's right. There we go. So he's got the sandbag coming up. Remember, we were doing this stuff earlier with an exercise pillow. If you have that pillow, you can use a pillow. You could use a stuffed animal. And here it is. Look, there's the left hand, right hand with a little patty cake. A little pat right there on the, on the back. Pat on the back. Remember, I always tell my friends, the only time you ever want to put your hands on somebody is to give them a pat on the back. I have a couple friends and sometimes they, they forget when it's appropriate and sometimes they'll be swinging their arms around and, and only when we're doing a pat on the back is when we want to do that. So Byron's going pat on the back, pat on the shoulder, shoulder tap, pat on the back, pat on the bag, pat yourself on the back. I like it. Everybody, if you can, pat yourself on the back. That's a good move. Now, here goes Byron. Look, he was doing it. What did we call that one? We called it the close. Oh, I got to look it up in the chat room. Karen had a good name for it. That was the close pass reach press. Nice job, Byron. There's a behind the back move again. There's the hot potato off the ground. There's the sweeper. We call that one the sweeper because he's kind of cleaning off the floor right there. Letting that arm swing. And wow, did you see that, everybody? Byron caught that bag as it was flying away from his body. That might have been the one move right there that really got our mind and our body thinking real high speed. Concentration is number one. Byron's holding the bag with two hands, reaching out. This is that chest press. Reaching out with the bag, bringing it down by his knees down to the ground, dropping it on the ground, put it on the ground. Let's see what's going to happen. And he hot potatoed it up. He popped it up with a hot potato. Here he goes down again. He's going to show us there is another hot potato. Nice job, Nick. There you go, Nick. Yes, everybody. Nick, I like that, man. I like watching you push yourself. Here we go with some figure eights to finish things off. Byron's got about one more minute to go. He's going with the figure eights. He's going with the side to side. Right hand, left hand pass. And now he's going to the bowling alley. He's up at the bowling alley lane. He's up there. He's got, oh, and he got a strike. Nice job, everybody. Byron rolling it away, bringing those hands together, doing the namaste, everybody. Great job. What an incredible workout. Sammy, what'd you think about that? Pretty great, huh? Awesome. So Sammy, what we're going to do, I'm going to put up on the background behind me, the, the breathing motto. And so all you got to do is, is read the lines and uh, I'm going to move out of the way. So okay. I, won't, I won't be in the way to, to get in your way. Can you see this? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Sammy, go ahead and take it away. Sure. Um, breathe, breathe in the good. Breathe out the back. Breathe in the happy. Breathe, breathe out the sad. Breathe in your best. Breathe outdoors. Breathe in your power. So you reach your goal first. Oh, Sammy, you got it, man. That was terrific. Everybody give Sammy a round of applause. Great job from Sammy. Great job today from Byron and Nick. Also a terrific job, everybody, from Karen. Everybody, let's give Karen a round of applause. She did a terrific job. She was our co-host today. And she had the idea of the century. I was going to say the week, the month, the year. It's the best idea I've ever heard. Karen, we're going to make that happen. And I'm going to include you on the whole process. So you're going to get to be a designer on that idea. 
Oh my gosh, what a great job, everybody. I'll see you tonight. The Fitness Social is at 6 p.m. on the very same Zoom link that we're on. So if you want to hang out with us tonight, you know what? By tonight, I'm going to look into getting some, some pillows made. Uh, we'll talk about it. Everybody, 6 p.m. If you don't have plans, join us on Zoom. We're going to hang out. And if you do have plans, I hope you have a great night. Hope you have a great weekend. Remember, do one activity this weekend for your mind and body. And I'll see you on Monday. Here we go. Let's get the countdown. Nick is always great at giving us the countdown. Let's bring you up, Nick. Let's get ready. Nick, give us that countdown and bring it on home. All right. And bye, buddy. Go and look. Bye, everyone. Bye, Have a everyone. wonderful day. Great job, Evan, Bye, Tyler, Sean.